I am a professional photographer and I'm depressed. I'm not depressed because I've had any private issue in the family, whatever. I'm depressed because I realized three days ago that 90% of photography as we know it is gone forever. It's dead. It will be replaced with AI imaging tools. And unless you as a photographer adapt to it, your business is at risk. And I will explain you in this video why. And I will explain why AI imaging tools are so powerful and will replace most of our work. What happened three days ago that made me so depressed? Well, Midjourney released a new version 5 update. And this update was particularly focused on creating real photographic imagery. I have to realize no matter if I dislike it, I hate it, or if I found it ethically problematic, I realize this is the future. Basically what will happen from now on is that 90% of all images you see in the web will be created through AI image generation tools, which means you write a text, you get an image, you publish it, you sell it, you do whatever you want, and this is it. 9.999% of the rest of the images will be real photos that we photographers took and you modify them through AI tools instead of classic Photoshop. I will show you also in this video how it works. And the remaining 0.001% will, will be the classic real old photography done, for example, with uh, Polaroids or uh, film cameras where you still have some kind of chemical evidence of your original photo. And maybe we will have some kind of vinyl moment where there is a comeback of the film classic photography. But now let's move on to Midjourney 5. And I will prove you with three samples why Midjourney 5 is finally come to the point where it will replace 90% of photography. Here, for example, you see two images created with the same exact prompt. One with Midjourney 4 on the left. And you can clearly see that this still doesn't look like a real photo. It looks a bit like cartoonish and the colors are off. And you can definitely say this is not a photo. On the right, you see the exact same script run with Midjourney 5 and it looks like a real, 100% real photo. You couldn't tell if this is uh, generated or taken by some professional photographer. Moving on to second sample. Again, on the left, Midjourney 4, on the right, Midjourney 5. The difference is immense. And here again, another prompt where I asked to create a studio portrait of a supermodel. On the left, you see the Midjourney 4 version, on the right, the Midjourney 5 version. So now we have come to the point where you can, within seconds, create stunning images that look like a real photograph. And those will replace 90% of photography work that we, as we know it. I will show you a couple of examples. So for example, a client asks you for a nice portrait of a beautiful woman that, to be used in a magazine or whatever. And you can simply run it through Midjourney 5. Here, for example, you see images of a spouse on a beach. They look beautiful, realistic no issue at all. Or a client needs some pictures of tribal woman from Tanzania. You can run the script, create the images, and the results look like real professional photography. Or a young woman with a surfboard on the beach, you can create this image. Or a woman walking away from the camera with some kind of chiaroscuro feeling, you can have it. Or a classic golden hour portrait of a woman on a beach. Here you can see a couple of examples. Every image really looks Nice. A magazine asks you for a nice picture from some kind of food or a restaurant wants a nice picture of food. I will show you a couple of examples. Here you see vegetables or a cake or a lasagna. And you can go on and on and create whatever you want. And if a client comes and asks you for a nice landscape print uh, that he wants to hang on the wall of his new house, you can create it in seconds. Here, for example, you see a mountain covered in snow. If you want also a river to be there, you can add it on the image. Here you have the river and on the back the mountains in the snow. If the client wants a more Asiatic feeling, you can also generate those kind of images like here. What's also cool is that with Midjourney 5 and any other AI tools, can, you can simply add um, film styles to any image you want. Like for example, here you have a Kodak look. You can even specify what kind of film Kodak film has been used and what kind of lens you used or camera. The same goes with, for example, a Polaroid look. 
I also asked Mijuno5 to create some images of supermodels on a bar with a Fujifilm style look in color and also in black and white and those images again look very nice. You can even mimic the film style of a certain period like for example the 70s. Here are a couple of examples of women from the 70s. So as you see 90% of photography will be replaced by AI imaging. And you as a photographer, if you worked in that area, if that was your business, you can adapt to it by learning those tools to create images because you have a knowledge, you know how to create and visualize images that, that work for your client and you have to just throw away the camera and learn those tools and make it. You know, for example, the different film styles, the lighting, the viewing angles, and you can simply use that brain of yours write the text the way you know it will work and create imaging that work for your clients. But there will be also a second new business, which is a hybrid between real photography and AI imaging editing. And this is an area that I'm very focused on and I will show you a couple of examples in my next videos. So please again, subscribe this channel if you don't want to miss that. I will quickly only show you three examples right now using Playground AI. Here you see a portrait of my wife. This is a real image. And I asked Playground AI to make her hair blonde. And in within a couple of seconds, you create a portrait of a woman from brown to blonde hair. Basically, thanks to AI tools, you can now modify real photos using simple text commands instead of using classic Photoshop workflow with masks and layers and so forth. For example, here you have a street image of my city Merano during the daylight and I wanted to have a night look with snow on the ground and he created it within a couple of seconds. As a last example, I show you an image of a flower and I wanted to have a bee on it. So I asked Playground AI to add the bee. He made it within seconds and here is the result. I'm currently testing many of those AI tools where, for example, you can create 3D images out of your simple 2D images or where you can expand the image. For example, you took a portrait, but somehow the face of the person is cut. AI can recreate the other half of the person so that you have a full shot of the image. So it can also fix some of the errors you take while working, for example, at, during a wedding photography. You have some missed shots where it's a bit uh, blurred or where you miss a part of the image. You, you can really recreate this with using those AI tools. So I think every photographer has to dig into those new AI tools to stay up to date and to keep working to be successful in the business. So as you see, AI tools will change the way we work with photography and we have to adapt it. And maybe the only good thing of all of this is that uh, there will be a time where authenticity and real creativity and real photography will be valued again. Because in a world where everything can be generated and faked easily, maybe real photography will gain of value. Like for example, shooting film again. Here I have my Mamiya 7. seven. Maybe um, making work with that kind of camera where you have a chemical proof that everything you took is real and not fake by any means. Maybe this will gain some traction. Maybe we'll have our vinyl moment in the music in industry. Will you have it in the photographic industry? I don't know. I think you shouldn't be scared. I think my message here is that we have to learn to adapt, take the best out of it. I think AI tools are funny, can be very creative, interesting. I also think there's a lot of potential in that hybrid photography and AI editing. And uh, maybe everything will just work out fine for us photographers, but we cannot ignore it. So again, subscribe this channel. Uh, I will make some tutorials about, about all what is happening soon. So I would love if you keep following me. See you soon.